by our man Richard Andrew Grove, now of tragedyandhope.com, right? Yeah, I mean, that was one of my favorite things about, uh, like, at first, when I first met you, you know, it was like we were out on break or something, and uh, one of the first, you know, things that I did was, like, okay, there's a new guy on crew. Let's make sure he didn't vote for Bush. <laughs> that was really like as base level politically speaking let's that I see was. See what at we're the time. dealing with. <laughs> like, well, let's see if this guy's good. All right, all right, all right. I like this guy. I like the cut of his jib. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I, I thought of just asking you to sort of interview me. I guess, which puts mm-hmm. me in an odd spot because I know it's always tough because I, then I want to turn around and talk a bunch or direct the conversation. But I guess. No, take take it away. I, I don't know what well, what area or how what avenue you or direction you want to try and go. Well, I think I think it's a relatively, you know, it's it's a unique opportunity that you've given me here, just because I've been listening, you know, since day one, <laughs> and every so often, you know, it's tough to get a hold of you. Sometimes a lot of work goes into this, and I know that, and so it's just like, well, shoot, there's always questions that I want to ask him, but am I gonna am I gonna get a hold of him next week? <laughs> so you know, I guess. I, I couldn't pass this up. Of course not. <laughs> I mean, um, so right at, right out of the gate, what's right out of the gate? All right, all right. Well, what I got first off is you know you know remembering back to when we were on the graveyard and when you were shopping around for a place to broadcast um, the radio version of Media Monarchy because mm-hmm. you already had it on the on the web. Yeah. Um, how did you wind up with Portland Radio Authority? I mean, did you just walk in and say, "Hey, I want a show"? <laughs> the way it, it worked out with with PRA and I initially I went to there's a, a great independent non-commercial radio station in Portland that's been around for a long time 90.1 FM KBOO KBOO that for me when I moved to Portland in the fall of 2005 that was the first place I went because I knew that hey that's you know they're an FM broadcast and it was the most comparable to where I was coming from from WSHC the station I worked for back east in my college town but I, I realized early on there that there was no way I was going to get a show immediately, that there was a lot of things going on, and a lot of the folks seemed to be grandfathered into their shows mm-hmm. so that if they didn't move, no movement was going to happen, and you couldn't kind of get in unless somebody else decided to quit their show, and you find that people have been doing shows there for years and years. I basically would have been a you know phone-answering, envelope-licking lackey, and my own pride coming from being the music director back east wouldn't wouldn't let me you know go back to answering phones. So I kind of realized, and I and I talked with with some of the folks there, and I think the management has changed. And again, I'm I'm not trying to talk crap about them at all. I don't know if if it sounds that way, but I I talked with them and basically said, well, this probably won't work out for me. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Portland Radio Authority started to get a buzz as a pirate signal downtown Portland. Yeah, I recall that, barely. And I don't even actually know the frequency they were using, but at the time, my girlfriend and I were both doing some work for the film center, and it was always on there, and she won tickets to go. We went to see a band called Low. We won tickets to see them at the Doug Fur, and they were doing all kinds of great stuff, and I just heard more and more buzz about the Portland Radio Authority. The flashback to this is, is I wasn't hired yet. I was still doing temp temp work as the buzz for for PRA was growing they got busted by the FCC we got busted by the FCC mm-hmm. for the pirate signal and when that happened i think a lot of people quit because i don't know if it lost the you know the outlaw appeal or people didn't want to do it cuz it was only on the internet which you know they would probably kick kick themselves now and we're like yeah. oh the internet is that thing still around <laughs> As my microphone cuts out. <laughs> well, I've, I've totally noticed that one over the years. Like, you know, I used to do the shows uh, with indie media, and people are like, oh, you have a radio show. Oh, it's on the internet? Uh-huh. You know, and, and then it's, it's just funny to see how things quickly changed. Because at that time, you know, there wasn't really any 3G and all that kind of stuff to speak of where people can get everything on their, on their mobile device. Mm-hmm. But basically, when PRA got popped by the FCC, they went to just purely being online on praradio.org. And I think because a lot of people left, it opened up a ton of slots. So I essentially sent an email to... Jeff Simmons, who's now gone on to start Radio23.org, mm-hmm. and he's got Cascade Community Radio, and all that stuff is growing, and we can we can talk more about that later if you want. 
um, got in touch with him, gave him the idea for the show, and he was essentially like, absolutely, sounds great, come on board, because I don't think there was anybody doing any any kind of talk or news or any kind of current affairs show. On, it was probably on, mostly just music, wasn't it's, it? It's mostly just music, as I think it still, for the most part, is to mm-hmm. this day on, on PRA. So that was how it started, and, and Jeff Simmons brought me in there and gave me the tour and gave me the, the, the lowdown, and it was in our old studios. We, of course, have been in these new studios for, God, it's going to be two years almost, I, I, wow, I guess. Wow, already? I think. Or maybe it's just a year. Maybe, maybe two, a year. Maybe just a year. <laughs> <laughs> or somewhere between a year and two. I'm a little confused. Well, yeah, but that's, it, it but that's how I ended up at PRA, and even though the question for me comes up, and, and I must admit it's coming up more and more, of the question between, well, can I maybe just do this better from home, from my kind of home base and my home office where I can have things set up all the time? But I get, there's something I've always liked having a place to go to at a scheduled time to do your thing. Mm. So whether that was doing theater and sound design stuff back east... I liked the fact that, you know, the play opens on January 7th at 8 o'clock. It's like, so your stuff better be done. Yeah. It gave you the deadline to get that sound design together. So the same thing with having a radio shift is you know that Friday mornings at 10 a.m. I have a show and I'm live. And especially now with the folks that carry the show and carry it live. They're expecting it. They're expecting it and I'm even more locked in. So it's Mm -hmm. kind of, it's difficult to just be like, oh, you know, oh, I'm not going to go in. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, doesn't happen. And I plan and plan things out in advance so that, you know, hopefully folks know and they can plan around it. So, I mean, that's that's the way it's been going and that's the way I foresee it to continue going. But I think, you know, definitely I probably am going to start to morph to maybe do a little more home-based and audio-video kind of work. I'm not saying I'm not going to do a, a weekly show. At least not yet. There's something uh, about it that, you know, it, it's hard. Yeah. The amount of news that, that I go over and have to just accumulate and save and collate and cross-reference and put in, it takes a toll. And yeah. I wonder sometimes if Media Monarchy would be better pointed towards getting a little more in-depth into certain areas. However, I also know that the whole reason I think the show is what it is and why it's you know as as popular if i can say that as it is is because of the format is because it has a poop load of news in a two hour (laughs) you know weekly podcast you can pretty much get the rundown on everything that's going on well that that actually shoot (laughs) that correlates to a whole bunch of other questions i had as well um but specifically i was i'm I mean, I've known you for years, and I'm still wondering this one every every week when I tune in and listen. I'm sitting there going, you know, how do you manage your time to, you know, to get Media Monarchy ready each week? I mean, there's a ton of information that you're coming through. I mean, you've mentioned before that you, you use the... Uh, like what is it? It's the the Gmail thing where I, it dumps news. Yeah, relating to I certain use the tags. like Google Reader is their like RSS subscription mm-hmm. service. So I subscribe to way too many things, and I need to do some yeah. you know cleaning in there to get it rid of things mm-hmm. that just kind of clog it up. But I mean, how many how many hours like per week goes into a two hour episode? I couldn't even say. It's, no no yeah. guesstimations at I, all. I mean, because it would basically you know well it would probably be a few hours a day. Mm-hmm. So a few hours. So I mean, at least at least twelve hours to make two hours. Uh, about as much as a full time job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably a little more. I'm guessing. <laughs> Mr. Modest here. <laughs> but it's. I mean, that's that's the thing. It's it's a way to. And and again, something I think I kind of wanted to address with with having you in here is to sort of show in a way where there's no kind of magic. Mm-hmm. You know, secret. Now, yes, of course, I've kind of I've studied media essentially all my life, so that part comes naturally to me. But as far as the the production of the show with you stream videos and the podcast and all that other kind of stuff, it's like I've just kind of been learning as I go along. And I think it's important to kind of tell folks where it's like, no, I just subscribe to websites that I like. Mm-hmm. I go through those feeds. I put things in bookmark folders. So, like the you know the news purge that we go over that has the little subheadings of things, whether it's nine eleven news or mm-hmm. geopolitics or holy hexes or all those things, I have little folders in my you know bookmark manager hmm. 
and I put the related stories in there. So as the week starts to go by and I start to build things in there, you can start to see how things will fit together. Mm. And I'll sort of update those and, and maybe, you know, pull out something old and put in an update if it's kind of a breaking or developing story. But I just kind of build them and catalog them in the... In, in a the, folder. In a folder. And then they're able to sort of like... I can post them and I'm not starting from scratch. It's like the, the work has already been done, kind of whittling it down by having it mm -hmm. in those folders. Then I also just try and find whatever maybe, you know, I, I can only really reasonably by myself post one good thing to Media Monarchy a day. Mm -hmm. Because then I started Food World Order and then I started Cyberspace War. And fortunately, I've got Alan in Omaha posting to Cyberspace War. Mm -hmm. And if I could get somebody doing the same thing on Food World Order, if I could start to get folks that were interested in, say, some of those subheadings into just 9-11 stuff or just mm -hmm. geopolitical things and have them focus and be able to say, you know, geopolitics, Zach, is your topic. So mm -hmm. once a week, you know, I'd, I'd want you to post something. And whether that was just a mm -hmm. like a... A breakdown or a blurb or just a, a list of headlines or something in a way to kind of mm -hmm. cover that, that angle. area and that to me would be the way to sort of help build media monarchy and to have i wouldn't even want to think of it as like oh i could have you know tint my fingers and have my minions, <laughs> minions. to do work <laughs> you're not uh you're not mr burns <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, afraid I'm, not, not. I'm not striving for that but it would be an awesome way i mean to help build it mm -hmm. i know i i and loved seeing it I, uh, years ago, now, blacklistednews.com was pretty much just run by Doug. Yeah. And I've been in touch with him. We don't keep a whole lot in touch anymore because he got a couple extra folks that were doing their own other smaller websites to sort of shutter those sites and come on board with mm -hmm. Blacklisted News. And once he got some folks else in there, they just exploded. And they've become mm -hmm. one of the premier alternative news sites out there. Excellent. And it's because there's a few people, I think kind of around the clock mm -hmm. you know i'll be out at two in the morning having a cigarette and looking at twitter on my mm -hmm. ypod and see stuff from blacklisted news and it's just yeah it's just trying to i guess to build that and i can only kind of slowly and surely do it because there has to be some kind of quality control in a of way because it's still i i want to have the sort of i guess editorial control that i want things to look the certain way and to you know have some level of quality that i think is the thing that's brought people to the site in the first place 